Hey, what's up, guys? It's Wednesday, March 25th, um, the second week of our shutdown. I uh, hope everybody's finding this message safe, healthy, um, and active. Uh, it's supposed to be 67 degrees tomorrow. I know it's supposed to be like 55 today, sunshine in both days. Get out and get some fresh air. Um, do what you can to stay active, stay away from people by all means, but uh, do what you can to get outside, be active, and enjoy this time that you have. Um, so Monday, we talked about welding joints, positions, and symbols. We covered the first objective here, identify and define the parts of a fillet weld and groove weld. With that being said, we figured out there are two types of welds, not two types of weld joints or positions, but two types of welds. One is a fillet weld, anything welded where two pieces of metal make an intersection or a perpendicular joint, a 90 degree angle or multiple 90 degree angles. Those are fillet welds. Fillet welds include T-joints, lap joints, corner joints, uh, things of that nature. Then we talked about groove welds. Groove welds are oftentimes used in, in the pipe uh, and butt joints comprised. Um, butt joints make up groove welds. Um, most of the time, if you got a square groove, then it's a, just two pieces of plate put together and it's a butt weld. Um, then you've got beveled, you've got double bevels, you've got all kinds of different groove welds, but, and we'll talk about those later in another lesson. So fillet welds, groove welds. Our first objective was to identify and define the parts of a fillet and groove weld. We did that. Granted, I only have three responses back from the follow-up quiz to that lesson. So if you haven't done that, please make sure you do. It's very important. Uh, these are the only grades that I'm taking for lab right now. So your, your participation in that is extremely important to your lab grade. Okay, I can't grade something you don't do. So um, make sure you get those in, please. Uh, let's see here. So we defined the parts of a fillet and groove weld. We talked about the toe of a weld. We talked about leg length. We talked about reinforcement, the face of a weld. Effective throat, actual throat, root opening. Um, we talked about multiple different things. And, and from those three responses that I got, we did a pretty good job of covering that content because those grades were really, really good. Uh, and, and there were more. I think there were five questions on the previous follow-up quizzes. This one had 15, and I felt like it was more in depth. And uh, so you guys did a really good job. Those of you that did it, did a really good job. I'm looking forward to seeing more uh, really good quizzes turned back in. Today... We're going to kind of piggyback off of those fillet welds, groove welds, and um, the, um, uh, the, the parts of a weld. And we're going to talk about number two here, describe the four welding positions of plate. And we're going to compare and contrast the five basic joints and type of weld on each joint. Types of weld joints. So groove welds and fillet welds can make up several different types of weld joints, but there are five basic types of weld joints. The first one is a butt joint, a type of joint between two metal parts that lie in the same plane. A butt joint is most common joint type. So they're saying a butt joint is two pieces of metal that lay in the same plane. If I were to offset those planes any, that then becomes a fillet weld. Does that make sense? If they're on the same plane is when I get a butt joint. Okay, if I were to offset that, I would have a fillet weld and a whole different type of weld joint. That'd be a lap joint, right? So a corner joint, a type of joint between two metals or two metal parts located at a right angle to one another. So a corner joint would be like this, uh, located or at a right angle to one another. An edge joint, a type of joint in which the surface of two metal parts to be joined are parallel to, to one another, and the weld is to be made at their common edges. So if I take two pieces of metal like this, smash them together, put the weld right down the middle, that is an edge joint. Uh, lap joint, a type of joint between two overlapping metal parts in parallel planes. Okay, the planes are parallel to each other, but one part laps over top of the other, creating a lap joint. Uh, T-joint, that's pretty self-explanatory. You guys should know those uh, really, really well. 
Uh, T-joint is a type of weld joint produced when two, two metal parts are perpendicular to each other, forming the shape of a letter T. That's pretty self-explanatory. That's a T-joint. Two pieces of metal coming together in a perpendicular, um, at a perpendicular intersection, making the shape of a T. So those are the five basic weld joints. Five. Make sure you remember that. Uh, here's a better picture than my hands to show you what each one of these joints look like. Edge joint here, corner joint here. Notice the two pieces of metal um, intersecting here, creating a corner weld joint. Same thing here with the edge weld. Two pieces of metal slapped together with the, the two common edges to be welded. T joint, it's pretty self-explanatory, looks like a T. Uh, butt joint, two pieces of metal on the same plane even with each other. That creates a butt joint. This lap joint are two pieces of metal parallel to the same plane, but overlapping. That creates a lap joint. So now we're going to talk about welding positions. Um, we've gone over welding positions. I mean, you guys, um, you guys in lab have done every one of these joints in a flat, horizontal, and vertical position so far. We were hoping to get the overhead by the end of the year. Don't think that's going to happen. Uh, weld positions. This is for this is for plate steel. Okay, there's there are welding positions for plate, which four of those positions are very common, and then there are welding positions for pipe. We'll go over pipe tomorrow or uh, Monday rather. But today we're going to talk about plate welding positions. Flat. The welding position used to weld from the upper side of the weld joint. The face of the weld is approximately horizontal. So flat would be laying flat on a table and an overhead approach, or I mean, I'm sorry, an overhand approach to that weld joint. Okay, not overhead. Horizontal, a common welding position used for a fillet weld and groove welds. For fillet welds, welding is performed on the upper side of a horizontal surface in, in and against a vertical surface. For groove welds, the weld axis lines in a horizontal plane and the weld face lies in a vertical plane. Basically, that's what, a, that's what we've been doing with lap joints uh, in lab. Those vertical lap joints are, to be, or I'm sorry, those horizontal lap joints are to be upright and that weld being made in that upright position uh, from left to right or right to left, depending on your hand. Vertical, it's pretty self-explanatory. You guys know what this is as well. The position of welding in which the weld axis is, appro is approximately vertical. There are two styles of vertical welds, a vertical up, which you guys all know really, really well, uh, traveling from the bottom of the weld joint upwards, and a vertical down from the top of the weld joint traveling down. Those don't have two different symbols, okay? They're not two different position names for those. It is just a vertical. Now, depending on uh, your welding procedure specification, it'll tell you whether to run that down or vertical up. Um, but I train you guys to run vertical ups on everything because after you perfect or know how to weld a vertical up, vertical downs are really, really easy. And then finally, overhead. The position in which welding is performed from the underside of the weld joint. I'm sure every, uh, every one of you guys have probably tried this in your booth at one point in time, even though we're not at that point yet. I'm sure you've gotten underneath a piece of weld or a piece of material and tried to weld above your head. That's overhead. Um, flat, uh, flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. This is showing you what those look like. Again, here's a common misconception with a flat T-joint. Notice, notice the weld axis of the flat T-joint. Many of you think, and many professionals, honestly, that claim they're experienced, think that this is, in fact, a flat T-joint. It's not. That's a horizontal T-joint because the weld axis itself is horizontal. This is a flat T-joint as the weld axis is flat, okay? So notice the difference between the two of those. Flat groove, horizontal groove. You've got a vertical groove, which um, many of you are gonna be practicing for your D11 certification. Uh, hopefully a few of you will try the 3G on this and certify doing so. Um, there's your 3G um, vertical groove. And again, that's upward progression uh, and your 3G, or I'm sorry, your 3F, um, your, your vertical fillet. 
This is what it looks like to, to see an overhead groove. Uh, maybe I have some ambitious people uh, that want to tackle a D11 overhead uh, next year. And this is what an overhead fillet looks like, just basically an upside down T joint. So, welding certification positions. And now this is, again, this is just for plate, okay? So we're only referring to plate when we talk about this right here. Um, welding, welding certification tests are performed in various positions and using different types of materials. Plate and pipe tests are commonly used with either fillet or groove welds. The positions are designed by a number, while joint types are designed by letters, as shown in figure four and five. Let me explain that real simple. Groove welds have the, the letter G following the position. Fillet welds have the letter F following the, the position. So, a 1G, 1 represents flat, so a 1G would be a flat groove weld. 1F, 1 represents flat, the F represents a fillet weld. That would be a flat fillet. Uh, 2G would be a horizontal groove, 2F would be a horizontal uh, fillet. 3G would be a vertical um, groove weld. 3F would be a vertical fillet. 4G would be an overhead uh, groove. Um, and 4F would be overhead fillet weld. It's really easy. One flat, two horizontal, three vertical, and four overhead. Depending on whether or not it's a groove weld or a fillet weld determines whether or not I add a G on the end of that or an F on the end of that. It's really easy. Just give it time. Think about it a little bit. You're going to be tested over this stuff. Um, that really concludes our lesson for today. So we've accomplished the objectives. One, which was to identify the parts of the weld. Two, was to compare and contrast the, um, the type of, uh, the types of weld, um, welding, I think it was types of weld joints, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go back up here. Yeah, so uh, two was to describe the four welding positions for plate. We did that. One, two, three, and four. Flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. Three was to compare and contrast the five basic weld joints and the type of weld on each. We did that as well. Okay, so we touched base on the five basic weld joints, the positions of plate. Uh, we've accomplished those two objectives. Monday, we're going to start uh, distinguishing the actual welding positions associated with four positions of pipe. And then we're going to inter interpret basic information of basic welding symbols. I hope everybody stays safe. Let me know if you need anything. Uh, you've got my contact information. Um, text me, call me, whatever you got to do in these times. Make sure you get a hold of me if you need help. We also have, um, please make sure, please, please, please make sure that you're checking your emails. Um, our staff has gone gone to great lengths and done a really good job at Laurel Oaks providing you guys with information, um, you know, access sites to where you can go look at, uh, you can find other resources, um, all from one hub. So check out an email. I think it's from Mr. Hart or Mr. App, one or the other, sent out an email. Uh, Mrs. Brindley and Mrs. or Mr. Anderson did a really good job. They worked really hard on this site to kind of bring everything that you need to learn online or yeah, learn online to one central hub that will allow you to get to multiple different places really quickly and easily. So make sure that you're checking your emails, not just for that, but your other teachers, your other instructors that are posting assignments that need to be done as well. Again, this is the only way we can keep moving forward with education during this downtime. So please, please, please make sure that you're checking your email and doing what you're supposed to be doing. Again, let me know if you've got any problems, any questions, concerns, and uh, you guys have a great weekend. Look forward to seeing you guys again Monday.